Hey guy, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for a video on cryptocurrency every day. My name's Austin. Ernst Young and Ethereum, Morgan Stanley and crypto, and the Deutsche Bank and Bitcoin. Hit the like button, hit the like button, get this information out to as many people as possible, because I found this for you. The Deutsche Bank just released an 84-page research report detailing their predictions on a big picture macroeconomic level what the next decade will bring. In this report from the Deutsche Bank, they say, we present you with 24 contrarian ideas of how the 2020s, the next decade, may evolve because we believe it is best to prepare for the unexpected themes that may arise over the coming decade. Wow. And in this report, the concept of Bitcoin is discussed at four separate times. I mean, just for example, they chart the adoption rates of the internet, how much of the world has gone digital in the last decade into the next decade, and the adoption rates and how that relies to cryptocurrencies. As the world goes digital, why are we seeing the number of blockchain wallet users increase? Why are more people getting involved with Bitcoin? In fact, the first chapter in the Deutsche Bank's Imagine 2030, the decade ahead, the first chapter of the report is called The End of Fiat Money. And I want to share with you a few excerpts right from the report. This is from them. This is from the Deutsche Bank. The forces that have held the current fiat system together now look fragile as they could unravel in the 2020s. If so, that will start to lead to a backlash against fiat money and demand for alternative currencies such as gold, or crypto could soar. And before we get to their mention of Bitcoin specifically, this is their potential prediction of the trends that we could see for the traditional financial systems over the next decade. So what will happen to the global monetary system if labor costs start to reverse their 40 year trend? So if the economy, the global economy goes to hell, what are the banks going to do? Well, if central banks have their current mandates of keeping inflation around 2%, then they will be duty bound to tighten policy. That's what they should do. However, such an outcome is probably unrealistic given how much debt there is at a global level. And because of this, what are governments potentially going to do? Governments will surely first change central bank mandates to allow for higher inflation or look to reduce their independence rather than allow interest rates to rise. And ultimately, where politicians are worried about elections, it's likely that inflation will be the casualty. So what does this mean for you? What does this mean for Bitcoin? Well, according to the research from the Deutsche Bank, eventually it's possible that inflation will become more and more embedded in our system and doubt will rise about the sustainability of fiat money. The demand for alternative currencies will therefore likely be significantly higher by the time 2030 rolls around. So the question is, will fiat currencies survive the policy dilemma that authorities will experience as they try and balance the higher yields with record levels of debt? Well, that is the multi-trillion dollar or Bitcoin question for the decade ahead. Wow. I like it. I'm going to support this. Now, if this piques your interest and you want to read more of this 84 page report from the Deutsche Bank called Imagine 2030, then I'm going to link this whole report down below in the description. Check it out. Read it for yourself. I like it. Next piece of news. A group of ex Morgan Stanley developers are launching their own high speed crypto exchange. According to a recent announcement, a new high speed crypto derivatives exchange called Femex is expected to see its launch in the near future. The exchange will supposedly be fast enough to execute trades in less than a millisecond and will serve institutional and, re and retail investors alike. The reason this was significant to me is because the developers behind Morgan Stanley, actually a team of over 30 senior developers, eight of which used to have you know decades of tenure at Morgan Stanley, these developers are choosing to go into crypto. Now, do we need another crypto derivatives, ex derivatives exchange called Femex? Well, how these guys differentiate themselves is that the new exchange can perform as many as 300,000 transactions each second. And the platform started trading about 10 days ago on November 25th. Apart from the high speed transactions, 
the platform is also capable of delivering an order entry extremely quickly with a response time of taking less than a millisecond. So this is Morgan Stanley developers, ex Morgan Stanley developers saying that they think this is their way. They see a need from the traditional market. This is how they feel traditional finance is going to get into crypto derivatives and exchange. Before we get to Ernst & Young, the two other things that I found interesting is first, it's going to be offering 100x leverage, which is pure gambling with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. So they really want to bring in the masses. But also, they have a unique individual cold wallet system. The system will supposedly assign an independent deposit address to every individual user. That way, all user-owned assets will be kept offline and thus inaccessible to a potential attacker. So if you sign up for their exchange, they're going to give you an independent deposit address to secure your crypto. Interesting. This is their solution to bring traditional finance in. We'll see. Comment below what you think. But next piece of news, you can now send Ethereum anonymously for under $1. And this all comes from the Ernst & Young blockchain team published an open source code for its latest addition to the Nightfall project, which brings the potential for batching anonymous transactions on the Ethereum network. And if I could just talk candidly to you, while cheaper anonymous Ethereum transactions, yeah, that's, that's important. But to me, what's more important to me is this is Ernst & Young actually experimenting and making progress on an open public blockchain of Ethereum. To put this in perspective, this is not some paid for partnership, but a genuine open sourced contribution to the Ethereum ecosystem from Ernst & Young that they continue to refine. Really cool to see this kind of thing. It hits at the heart of what this technology is about. I agree. Another Reddit user says, this is huge news and a sign of real adoption. One of the big four accounting firms has spent two years now streamlining a protocol for enterprises that uses the public Ethereum chain. It allows for private transactions, batch batches transactions, and cheap transactions. I like it. If you're interested in reading more, I'm going to link these articles down below in the description. But essentially, this is just Ernst & Young's nightfall. This is ju just them optimizing their enterprise solution blockchain for businesses. Pretty interesting. I do want to share with you some bullish news involving XRP in Japan. But first, let's talk about space and the blockchain. Space Chain sends blockchain to the International Space Station. Space Chain, which is a company, announced Thursday that its blockchain based hardware wallet tech is about to reach the International Space Station, ISS. The technology is on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, which took off yesterday from Cape Canaveral, Florida. So on Elon Musk's little SpaceX Falcon 9, a blockchain-based hardware wallet tech is going to the International Space Station. Now, for some context, Space Chain has previously sent two blockchain hardware units into space, initiating a decentralized orbital network of fintech applications. Pretty cool. Now, what does this mean for you? Is this an altcoin you can speculate on? Does this affect your life? Not today, but it's just pretty cool to see blockchain being used on Earth as well as out of Earth. When anything major happens, I'll keep you updated. But next piece of news, Japan financial giant SBI Holdings is considering paying dividends in XRP. So Essentially, to phrase this another way, Japanese financial service giant SBI Holdings is considering paying shareholder dividends in the form of XRP tokens following the same practice by subsidiary Morningstar. So if this is true, obviously, well, obviously, SBI Holdings has huge clout in traditional finance space. They're a big juggernaut. And if this is true, because right now it's just being reported, the minute I, actually, I get actual confirmation, I will let you know I'm going to make a video. But it, if this is true, it shows that shareholders who choose to opt in, because this will be an opt in process, really believe in the future of XRP. Are they crazy? Are they geniuses? Time will tell. Anyway, that is the news for today. My name's Austin. Like always, I'll see you tomorrow.